This shit a cash business. Ain't no discounts. Ain't no shorts. Ain't no returns. What do you look like? Them young boys. About my height, maybe taller. You could have been shorter, too. What was he wearing? Jack. White joints with the words and shit in the back. What did the words say? Fuck, I'm supposed to know, officer. In case you may notice, I'm high as a motherfucking Georgia Pine right now. Bring him in and hold him until he starts making sense. On the way, most of the wildness happened when the sun went down. It's dark. So you can't see niggas scheming and plotting. But early mornings when shit is real, motherfuckers picking up the pieces of what happened the night before. Yeah. Let's go, Sam. He was in a holding cell. Sometimes the least person you expect to be significant is the person that can change the whole dynamics of an event. This guy here appears to be a crackhead alright, but some of his actions suggest that he is more than a crackhead. He can be working as a CI, confidential informant. One can say his CI definition is crack informant, but that's just by the way. Now let's look into this guy further. He was the only eyewitness who saw Kanan shoot Howard that night. When he was approached by the police that same night, his description was nothing to write home about. Now, if you pay attention to this scene of his where he was going to see Marvin, he was sober and seemed clear. Now, if you listen carefully to the words in the voiceover, it says that Around the way, most of the wildness happened when the sun went down. It's dark. So you can't see niggas scheming and plotting. But early mornings when shit is real, motherfuckers picking up the pieces of what happened the night before. This only tells you that the night of the shooting, he was indeed high. That was why he wasn't sure on the person he saw. But mind you, he did mention that he saw a young boy, not a man. And we all know that Unique can't be described as a boy even in that same jacket. So this crackhead was sure on one thing, which is a boy. What's up, power fans on YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another power video. In this video, I'll be focusing on this crackhead and what his testimony can potentially do. Why Raquel told Lulu about Crown's visit and why she also told Marvin about Kenya. I will also talk about Detective Berg and also Crown's death and what to expect in the coming episodes. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new. Like, share, and leave your thoughts in the comment section. Now, as usual, let's get straight into business. In one of my previous videos, I stated that if Kanan ever find himself with the police, the only person that can help him out is Howard. And I'm not surprised he helped him free famous. Now, if you are a CI to the police, it doesn't really matter what you do. All they need is accurate information from you. So if you are a crackhead, they won't stop you from taking cracks. Matter of fact, they will entice you with money since they know that is what can encourage you get them the information they need. So this guy we see in the neighborhood is not only a crackhead, but a CI. Why do I say so? When he got to Marvin and he gave him the drugs, he started asking Marvin questions about his outfit. Yo, what's up with that outfit? Now, mind you, he wanted an information. If you pay a second attention to their conversation, Marvin tries not to answer his questions directly. If he was wearing a wire, Marvin won't be in trouble because of how he was responding to his questions. So you can see that the guy was openly asking questions like, what kind of crack house closes? What kind of crack house needs cleaning? What the fuck is up, man? What kind of crack house is closed? Huh? I'm doing some cleaning, nigga. Clean crack house? I never thought of that. Yo, get the fuck out of here, man. This alone should tell you that he's an example of a crackhead who is bothered about other things after getting exactly what he wants, which is the crack. Such people are likely to be informants. They are not all about their cracks. So let me know what you think so far by leaving your comments, thoughts, and theories below. Now, moving forward, this same crackhead got arrested again for whatever reason. Now, CIs are randomly roped in by the police to make it look like an arrest so that they can get the information they need behind closed doors without an outsider thinking that person was or is a snitch. Typical example is how they stormed Scrappy's mother's place. So when they were dragging this crackhead to the station, I knew something was up. Now to lay more emphasis, they kept cutting to him looking at Kanan. 
He has identified Canaan and since his structure hasn't changed from the night he saw him, he is beginning to suspect that he was the one who shot Howard. Thing is, he is again seen with Howard which might be a little confusing to him. So it's either he's thinking the shooter was masterminded by Howard or he will think Howard doesn't know that Canaan shot him. In any case, this guy will be trouble soon. Now let's move on to why Raquel told Lulu about Crown visiting her at home. Inasmuch as Raquel was not in full support of his producing career because she felt he was not focusing on the business, Unique made it worse when he said Lulu was becoming shaky and doesn't have a steady hand anymore. We all know from the beginning Lulu was described as Raquel's right hand and everything that needs to be done, he gets it done and done right. So when Unique said Lulu didn't shoot Aurel on purpose, Raquel realized her brother was becoming soft and he started to have second thoughts about being ruthless and that very moment, she realized the distraction was the studio. Now, for Raquel to wake that ruthless side of Lulu, she told him about Crown's visit, something she promised Crown not to tell him. So she knew very well that Lulu would kill him for doing that if indeed there is still any ruthlessness left in him. And like we all know, Crown has overstepped on Lulu too many times and this was the last thing to get him killed and he did. Now, one other reason I think is that if Lulu takes Crown out, he has monopoly over the studio and she can start cleaning her money through the studio. With Crown still alive, that would have been impossible the way she would have wanted it. So the reason why Raquel told Lulu about Crown's visit is to get him back on track emotionally. Now, Raquel didn't only use her mind games on Lulu, but she has done the same thing to Marvin as well. Raquel knew that Marvin was going for anger management session and that is messing with his head. She felt like she's losing the beast nature of her brothers. So what did she do to Marvin? She told him that Kenya is in town and she's seeing Duke. So if you see the reaction from Marvin, you could see that clearly the anger management has been defeated by the mentioning of Kenya. Now let me know what you think in the comment section. Now let's talk about Detective Beck and how she's closing in on her partner Howard. Now you know in season 1 episode 9, she was digging into the drug that killed Duke's girlfriend Nicole and she even had to speak to Duke about it. Her theory was that Kanan sold the drugs, she was also questioning Dewey's murder and the connection it had with Buck 20. Now when Howard came to speak to her to apologize for something he has done to her, she made him aware that she was looking into the bad drug that was killing people and all her investigations were pointing towards Kenan Stark. Howard immediately snapped and asked her to leave that Stark kid alone and that he has nothing to do with all that. The fuck would you do that? A friend of hers from the Upper East Side died from that same crack we found in South Jamaica. I thought maybe she could help us trace it back to Kenan Stark. I told you the star kid had nothing to do with that shit. Now this was where Berg starts to get confused about Howard's overprotection of the Thomas family, especially Kanan. She then asks, Leave this shit alone. I don't get your thing with that family. Who are they to you? Why do you care about them so much? That was part of the reason they kept having disagreement. Now that she has found out that he has a teenage son, seeing him with Kanan at the station here will give her some partial conclusion that Kanan might be the son, hence his constant protection of him and his family. If she is smart, she will do the math and conclude on why Howard always disagrees with her when she wants to dig into Kanan. Now Beg will start digging more and want to have answers to all her suspicions. She will be tracking Kanan. Howard and the entire Thomas family until she gets answers to her questions. Let me know what you think, what your theories are in the comment section. Do you think Detective Beck is getting closer to the truth or she is on the path to her grief? If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share and most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. I'll see you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.